What if time doesn't exist? We live by the clock, wake up in the morning, plan our days, remember the past. We are convinced that time is something real, tangible, fundamental. But what if all of this is an illusion? What if time doesn't exist at all? It sounds strange, perhaps. But such ideas are discussed by physicists, philosophers, and neuroscientists. And there is much more sense in this theory than it may seem at first glance. Let's think. What do we actually mean when we talk about time? When we say time flies, time heals, I don't have time. What are we really talking about? We don't see time. We can't touch it. All we observe is change, a sequence of events. The sun rises and sets, we grow older. Objects decay. Maybe time is just a way of describing that something has become different. In ancient times, there were no clocks. People tracked the change of seasons, the positions of the stars. Later came sundials, hourglasses, mechanical clocks, atomic clocks. The more precise the instrument, the more precise the measurement. But measurement of what, exactly? Physicist Julian Barbour argues, time is something that doesn't exist. It is what we imagine in order to describe changes more easily. Philosophers have debated time for thousands of years. Aristotle said, time is the number of movement in relation to before and after. In simpler words, not a thing, but a way of comparing events. St. Augustine reflected, what is time? If no one asks me, I know. If someone asks, I don't know. He claimed, only the present exists. The past has already gone. The future has not yet arrived. And all that we perceive is a stretched out now. Memory, perception, expectation. And philosopher McTaggart went even further. He said, the whole idea of the flow of time is logically contradictory, and therefore time does not exist at all. 20th century physics completely changed the view of time. Before Einstein, time was considered absolute, the same for everyone and everywhere. But the theory of relativity showed time is a flexible part of reality. It stretches, contracts, depends on speed and gravity. For a satellite in orbit, time runs slightly faster than for us on Earth. If this is not taken into account, GPS navigation would fail. This means there is no single time for all. Every object has its own time, and now, deeper. In the equations of quantum mechanics, which describe the behavior of elementary particles, time is not necessary at all. The equations work without it. There is only the state of the system and the change of that state. And in some theories, such as loop quantum gravity, time is not just unimportant, it doesn't exist at all. If time is absent from the equations, maybe it exists only in our perception. Our brain is an amazing instrument. It doesn't just register events. It builds reality from signals, sensations, memory, and expectations. The brain connects memories and forms the sense of the past. It creates models of what may happen, and that becomes the future. And in between lies the feeling of the present moment. We don't perceive time directly, we construct it. There are experiments. People were isolated in rooms without clocks, windows, or sounds. Some said hours had passed when only minutes did, or the other way around. The sense of time disappears. In depression or anxiety, it becomes distorted. In schizophrenia, it collapses completely. In sleep, in meditation, in ecstasy, time disappears altogether. So, maybe time is not a property of the universe, but a function of the brain? There is another hypothesis. It sounds even more radical. The block universe theory. It says, the past, present, and future already exist. The entire universe is like a four-dimensional structure, not a flow, but a block. All events are already written. We simply move through them, like a reader through a book, or like a beam of light through film. According to this theory, time is the illusion of movement across already existing moments. This explains why we remember the past but do not know the future, because we are directed only one way. But if everything already exists, then where is free will? Where is choice? Where do I decide for myself? Or are we just passengers on a train moving along predetermined tracks? And here is the main question. If time doesn't exist, what does that mean for us? If there is only one moment and it is unchanging, who are we? Perhaps I am not a story, not a sequence of events, 
but simply a configuration of matter, information, and consciousness in one moment, a moment that perceives itself. Death, then, is not the end of time, but the disappearance of the observer. Birth is not the beginning of a new path, but the emergence of perception. Maybe nothing happens at all, everything simply is. It sounds frightening, perhaps, but maybe it's not horror, but freedom. If time doesn't exist, we don't have to cling to the past. We don't have to fear the future. We don't have to rush. There is only now, and only in it, everything we have ever experienced, felt, chosen. The present moment is the only thing that is real. So, does time exist? We don't know. Physics debates, philosophy doubts, the brain deceives. But in searching for the answer, we come closer to the very edge of understanding. And maybe the question is not whether time exists, but how we live while it supposedly flows. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you don't miss new videos. And remember, even if time doesn't exist, every click of yours matters.